But it all started about 111 years ago with our great-great-grandfather, Daniel Swarovski, who grew up in Bohemia, which back then was indigenous to crystal cutting. And he was rather frustrated with the process of cutting crystal from long glass rods with a grinding stone. And he just thought, my gosh, it must be a better means of cutting this crystal. And then, of course, the style icons such as Coco Chanel, Elsa Schiaparelli, Diane Freeland and Christian Dior used the crystal very heavily and very creatively. And then of course the emergence of the stars of the silver screen was very important for Swarovski. Um, the tiara of Audrey Hepburn and Breakfast at Tiffany's and um, Grace Kelly's jewelry, that's all Swarovski crystal. And of course it was Swarovski crystal which shone up the dress of Marilyn Monroe when she sang Happy Birthday Mr. President. We produce about 1.4 billion crystals per week. We employ 16,000 people worldwide. We have sales offices in 40 countries. We are the sparkling ingredient on the catwalk and on the stage, and the name really brings that home to us. My job is uh, until the moment that I make the dress. Then, you know, I, I cannot do more than this. So I have just to relax, cool down, and to wait. The inspiration was about um, the jazz moment, about uh, big, this big revolution, about Harlem, about uh, the woman that made it jazz. Uh, for example, Billie Holiday. There are two sides in the collection. The first one is all, all like her kind of day, kind of private mood. And the second one, she is like on the, on, on the stage. And it's for, the, for this, that's Barosky crystals. They give it to me like a big help because there was this lighting that it was amazing. Barosky crystals like to, to have like a real valley clothes and a fake one. <laughs> I use it as uh, something not as um, a little decoration, but really like part of the dress. So there are strapless on the dress. So there is a functional way to use uh, Christa Swarovski. I love the idea to use these big stones almost as jewelry and not just uh, as, uh, how can I say, as li lighting on the clothes.
so far. We've all been really amazing. We're all like we family. You know? Everybody's been in here till like two in the morning every every night for three weeks now. The print is, you know, fading. It's kind of like an old an old photograph. That kind of quality to it. That's what I was trying to get with the print. So it goes from black to stripes to white to stripes. So that's what the print looks like repeated, but it's at an angle. So you cut it on the bias so that when you fold it over, it stretches. This is the main cutting area of, this, of the studio. So they kind of do all the sort of cutting out. A piece of on the go over here, which is quite interesting. About six different layers and colors of chiffon all pleated up and then mitered into here and then kicks out into a large tray at the back. I want to sit in your eyes Feel the magic There's something that drives me wild And tonight It's got like a dirt, it's quite a rusty sort of Feel, so it's I like the contrast. <coughs> I like, between. yeah, I like the contrast between. It's quite futuristic, I think, as well. I mean, you know, the collection is very kind of uh, black colours, stone colours, and uh, a lot of embellishments in gold yeah. ones, which are used in in, in um, spot pieces of for chandeliers, and we're using it for shelters. Quite a lot, quite a long time to beat, so they're kind of making the beads and leaving them on the needles, and we're just sort them on the We're doing about 10, 10 beads on each thread. We did more before, we did quite a few, but now we're doing some short ones just to fill in some gaps. In this season, we, we use it much more towards garment construction than embellishment. I think I think that the embellishment is the, the final result. But we, as Chris told you, we're not applying anything on top. Our garment depends on the actual structure of the crystal to have the effect that you want. So there's kind of a, a coarser tree influence going on, which the, the kind of mood for the collection is almost like a Victorian rave. We've got kind of these very cyber. Uh, shapes, but also we've got this kind of corset shape with uh, quite sort of billowing and uh, 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 soft and frock tape. It's, it's a, it's a, it's, yeah, we're going to extremes to the, the soft, softest uh, 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 look with like hard and sharp tailoring pieces. And you've got that one as well, which is one of my favorite colors. Uh, it's a cobalt blue. It's like that got self light. I don't know. The light is really unusual and futuristic. Yeah, it's, it's quite like just like electric, electric like, lights. In, yes, in some lights. This is going to be the the finale outfit. Yeah, we can't show yet because the finale. <laughs> Bruno and I were discussing. He wanted to use meteorites, and what he wanted was the crystalline structure of it and all that sort of stuff. And I had some of these lying around. I showed him it. And we just put it all up in a, a modelling clay. And I said we could do something like this. And we've used diamonds before uh, on like million pound dress for Julian. And the diamonds didn't work at all in, in respect. The crystal dress that came on afterwards looked a million times better. When the light hits those white crystals, they'll send some light back, but they'll also reflect the black. And there will be the overall look of black, but there'll be like these little catches of light in it and people will be going, what is that? But yeah, these, these are chandelier components. We always use quite extraordinary things from Throst because they allow us to do that. It's like some of them are left hanging so that we can position like these on the left hang. All right, so, so you can be like... Put those two in there, then we can... So there's another one coming here? Yeah. So we can make them really slow. Idea, You're like a... Clever no. one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not, not, as you get used to it, it will get faster. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> that the same, that's exactly how we treat the crystals, really clean lines, really bold, really graphic. Um, and it, the, I think the fact that they kind of like slot together really works with that, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. We're just looking at what kind of bead sequence crystals there were in triangular shapes, and uh, we came across the Swarovski catalogue and saw the triangular ones, so we just knew they were right because they just have the nicest sheen and they just, they're really, really nice. So um, I think it's really nice because we use, on this particular chandelier ones, we're using a knitwear and I think that they're quite 3D, so they, they nicely sink in on one side into the knit and I think the contrast between knitwear and the, and the crystal is really, really not lovely. Around the sides and the front are the individual sewn crystals and circles. The larger circles, they're all filled in with chains that move. Those are the individual sewn ones in the small circles. I didn't realise there were so many different types of crystals, like AB being shiny and silver and pink. And you can attach them in loads of different ways. I didn't know about hot fixing before I came here. This pearl mesh is amazing. And the good thing about this is it's lots of little, you know, black pearls, but it's it's hot fix, so it has an adhesive on the back. So it enables you to cut out shapes and position things, and that's what's going on the cashmere suiting and bands and strips. Got, we've got a heat transfer press to, to have a, which we use for like the hot fix stones for the Swarovski pieces as well. Right. So we've got our own setup for doing it here now. You put some um, hot fix crystals onto the eyes of this um, this kind of t-shirt dress here. We used a lot, a lot of colour which you, you know people don't generally use for winter collections. Like the, lots of the silks had like um, lame woven into them. The, the technique that we used here with the, um, the, the like hologram foil and gives it a you know, slightly younger feel. It's, it's all, the nature of the game is always to keep on moving on and seeing you know what direction you want to, what feels right for that period of time. This is going to be a piece of um, knitted. It's got like this very fine um, metal knit and then with the um, Swarovski um, curved chain, which we've knitted, which is going to turn into a collar. It can kind of sit like a, almost like a polar neck going around with these strands, which will then go through onto a cashmere sweater. Um, these will set like really geometric strips. It has one more on the running along the bottom. So the whole body is framed within these strips of pearls in a very graphic way. Um, and then the pearls come over the neck and down the back, so it's quite a strong graphic statement using something which is traditionally viewed as, you know, very luxurious. And it's the same on the jacket. I mean, you've got to keep the quality there. It's cashmere, really fine Italian cashmere coat. But it's quite young as well. It's sleeveless, it's a gilet. The skirt as well is a cashmere skirt, but we've covered it in chiffon so that you, know, you get the feeling of different fabrics working there. And then the whole lines of the body are all geometrically framed within these um, graphic lines of pearls. We start with the yarn, then you have to dye the yarn to a specific colour, and then um, you have to like make a little loop with the crimp, so you've got something to attach to the dress, and then you slide the crystal on. When she walks, the feathers like, should swing, and then you'll see the crystals when they catch the light. I mean, it's one big gown, but it's all like 60s off art, it's like twisted round, but in yeah. a totally non 60s shape. Yeah. Brilliant.
another new development in the crystal world I feel is to mix luxury. So this is a chinchilla garment and this is inserted with a Swarovski AB and a classic crystal band. at the Basso Brook show and I'm so much looking forward to it especially after the little description I had of new discoveries and uh, astronauts and Fragonar it sounds like a, a very interesting mix this dress is just kind of just finished now and um, the actual inspiration for the dress was pretty much um, inspired by the crystal because it's, it has this kind of very ethereal effect with the, the print actually catching the light. Uh, this is the finale outfit. Uh, this is the only outfit we've used with this amazing um, cobalt blue colour. When the light hits it, it kind of looks like it's like thousands of little lights. of using like really triangular hard crystalline pieces so it kind of had like a meteorite feel. Mm. We, we kind of like the idea of kind of a new form of power dressing. We wanted to make it really really clean and really modern and we wanted to use uh, embellishments, we wanted to make them really really graphic and really really kind of futuristic. Hands are cold, I mean, I'm sorry. Oh, that we got for the show is, is like the highlands and it's got a very macabre 
twist to the show as well. And I produced a, I got a real eagle's head and actually worked from that and cast and carved and cast one in solid silver. The whole skull on the outside with smoky quartz and the inside eye sockets and the nostrils are of black spinels. We've created this beautiful, elegant, quite antique looking head, all pave set, and then Philips added this beautiful ray of feathers. The thing about it is, it's just it's a kind of poetic image of hats, because birds, eggs, and very special um, things are synonymous with each other. And Sean's done an incredible job with all these colors and the stones and making all of the nest cast individually, all the twigs out of metal. So it could only really work with this kind of combination of the stones, the metal Absolutely. and the feathers, um, make it look what it is. You can see it's absolutely magic. And it's the opening hat of the show, so everyone must be happy. We love a bit of glitter. Yeah. Nobody does it better.
lover 